Okay guys, with the snow coming back down, nice and strong outside, it is once again that we move back indoors. What this video is going to be talking about is trying to find a replacement for GBA and Wetterlings. As many of you guys are probably aware, GBA and Wetterlings, well, Wetterlings has maybe closed down shop. I've heard rumors of them closing their store a few years ago, but they're still awkwardly very active on places on social media like Instagram. So I'm not entirely sure they've shut down. I'm not entirely sure that GBA has shut down either. However, one thing I am sure is that the importation into America of GBA axes and Wetterlings axes have all but shriveled up and died. So even though those companies in Sweden or in the EU may still continue to exist and may still continue to deliver products that I'm unaware of or unsure. However, even if they do, these companies like GBA and Wetterlings are effectively dead here in America because we can't get their products. However, one company that does make Swedish axes is Holtzbruck and they still are delivering axes. So that has led me to the question of what is this company like? Are they just as good as GBA? The prices that they ask for these axes certainly are in the range of GBA axes. So what is their quality like? Okay, so to start off with this, it's only fair in my opinion to begin with the first the first comparison of being price. Now, these Holtzbrooks come in a kind of confusing two different uh, priced format. There's kind of their essentially bulk line, which isn't by any means or any stretch of imaginations a cheap line of axes. However, it's a more affordable version. And then there's their kind of handmade axes, which are really similar to GBAs and Wetterlings, and they are they drive a much more expensive price, once again, in line with a GBA. And so that being said, I paid 139 for this one, and long ago and far away, I paid like 145 or 149 for this one. So once again, you know, this one is significantly larger, so it does drive a higher price, but they're right in there and right in line with pricing. So for that heavy price, what are we getting? So let's take a look at it. So the first thing I do whenever looking at an ax, just as a preliminary, is I always look at the handle. I wanna see how it performs and how it feels in the hand. And this ax, having owned a Wetterlings, though I don't have a Wetterlings to show on table, I have owned one. And the initial curvature and overall ergonomics are very reminiscent of Wetterlings. The grain orientation, as you guys can probably see there, is just fine, it's no more you know, it's no worse or no more off, really, than our uh, GBA, and it's, you know, pretty straight. There's really no complaints with that. In my opinion, it's a pretty straight handle. Now, I will say, getting back to the ergonomics, there's something that GBA did that was really unique when it came to the gooseneck of the handle, and as you can see, that this doesn't quite accurately mirror that, but this was very unique, and I actually really love the ergonomics of this gooseneck because they actually trim or kind of take more material off of this area right here, and that allows you to get a really good grip at the back of the, the uh, axe handle. That is not present here. However, it's not a fatiguing handle to use by any means. Other than that, you also have this really stupid, like, warning stuff embossed onto the wood and once again i'm going to take this off of sandpaper i just wanted to keep this all on for this uh, kind of video going over the differences just so that it's kind of you know how it comes out of package versus how it comes kind of out of package so anyways yeah that's something to note and it's kind of stupid <laughs> so let's take a look next at the sheaths i have to say this is a very interesting sheath. I'm not really sure what to think of it because it uses a very different securement method. In fact, this is kind of what I do with it to make sure it's secure, but normally out of box it looks really more like this. It essentially just has this leather lace that goes around the pole of the axe and that's what secures it. It's definitely not my favorite method because it's a very hard to unmask uh, Kind of mask it's hard to use but it does do a good job at covering it and the overall build quality on it seems to be just fine right in line with something like a gba 
or Wetterlings. And the overall fitment is just fine. And once you kind of get past using, learning how to use this weird like leather lace thing here, it works. It's not my favorite, but it does work. Other noted other notes are it does have this kind of belt loop if you have a really super tiny belt. What I've actually done with this in the past is if you're one of those people that likes to use baldric rigs, uh, you can actually string up a baldric rig off of this because it's not quite as wide as a belt, but you can usually, or this isn't quite wide enough for most belts, but you can usually get some paracord or different uh, things through here and like I said string it up for a baldric rig so that does add to the options of carry however for the most part I just carry these because I almost religiously use Carhartt uh, pants usually I just carry this in the uh, hammer loop on the pants because it's a much more convenient way for me to carry an axe okay so with that out of the way let's actually take a look at the axe so this is how it came and once again, kind of going back to fitment, the first thing I look at is fitment. And with this one, I'm not super happy. Now, I'm probably going to have to use a flashlight because the lighting in here is never quite right. But you guys can see here, up at the front, there's a little bit of lacking here, which I'm not a huge fan of. But my primary complaint is around the back. You guys can see here that there's a little bit of a uh, gap right here. But that gap actually becomes pretty exaggerated down here so oopsies <laughs> as I hit the camera hopefully you guys can see here that there's quite a bit of gap right in here and that's not cool I don't really like that and once again you know going up front there's a bit of a noticeable gap there as well and so what that means is either that the handle was not fitted very well to the axe head or that the axe head was not made very well in the way that it relates to fitment. However, I will notice, or I do note that it is not causing any nominal play, though one really interesting thing, or maybe not interesting, but one kind of fact when it comes to axes is due to the fact that they are a striking tool, they can loosen up their heads can loosen up at any point and especially if you have a miss strike or something like that because of the nature of what an axe is just because it starts out with no head play doesn't mean that head play can't develop now I have briefly used it cut up a little bit of wood but I have not extensively tested it so I'm not sure how the head uh, fitment will hold up however I don't really see it becoming an issue though it is slightly it's always disconcerting when you see you know that much gap and or that much gap that is not something I like to see and once again you know I wouldn't be as complaining about this if this wasn't a you know close to $150 axe so in comparison in contrast this is where we're gonna have to grab the GBA here so looking at the fitment of the GBA, you'll notice that there's no fitment issues with the handle in the front or in the back. There's absolutely nothing. There is a you know straight contact between every single point on the wood. And you know, once again looking at the front of it or looking at the top of it, you can see you know more of the same here. There's no gap at all with the fitment. You can also notice that the grain is very straight and very good so okay so finishing it up we have one last area to cover when it comes to these axes and that is their blade grinds so let's take a closer look at those real quick okay so this is probably the largest area of contention for me when it comes to the Holtzbrook axes. And that is that if you notice on a, any GBA, but this, GB, this GBA in particular, if I can speak today, you'll notice that it is a hand ground grind, so it's not perfect, especially right here. But you'll see that this is a very consistent, very even grind angle, and it results in about a three quarter inch to half inch grind uh, for the actual blade that goes straight down in a convex style to the cutting edge. Now if we take this 
Colts brew here, trying to get it in some good lighting for you guys, you'll notice that it's very different. Now, the grind itself is similar in the convex manner, but it's ground in a very uneven way. You can see that where it's polished is the edge. You can see that it starts out very shallow, then, you know, starts to get wide and, you know, pretty wide from about here to here, and then it tapers off and gets really super short on toward the end. And that's, of course, reflected on this side as well. And this, in my opinion, is what I don't like. Now, once again, I have used it, and it did cut through wood just fine, but I have a feeling that this uh, type of edge design and style will get largely outclassed by the wood it's cutting. And what I mean by this is this GBA regardless to whether you're cutting through a two inch piece of wood to about a 10 inch piece of wood, due to how it's ground and how much contact surface remains on each and every stroke when you're hitting the wood, you get a lot of bite. You're using practically the whole edge. Whereas when you strike with a Holtzbruch like this, and it has such a um, exaggerated U shape to the blade or sweep or belly, whatever you want to call it, when you actually swing and hit the piece of wood, your contact surface is about from here to here. And so, especially on a hatchet, when you don't have, you know, as long of a cutting edge as this, it's really important to have as much of that sharpened edge contact the piece of wood on every stroke. And that helps in several ways. One of them is reducing fatigue and, you know, increasing effectiveness. So that is something that I don't like. In addition, another issue that arises from having this exaggerated belly is that when you don't grind a very deep grind, you know, on your, your heel and your toe of your axe blade, what's happening is that your heel and toe, while sharp is true, they have a very thick amount of steel behind the very cutting edge. So naturally, it's gonna take more effort to push that steel wedge through the wood or through whatever you're cutting and thus you know consume more calories and make you fatigue faster so i don't think there was a lot of time and energy spent into understanding the type of blade grind they were going after because especially when it comes to largely wood dealing largely wood dealing axes or these types of axes are used you know in camping bushcrafting that type of uh lifestyle, it's more important to have an edge that's shaped like this. And this is something that even the Wetterlings, the Wetterlings was very good because it was, I believe it was even flatter and it's cutting edge than this was. And so once again, every time you struck with the ax, the blade, the entire blade was making contact with the wood and cutting through it in a faster time. Holtzbrooks, they have the quality level of a GBA in most regards, but they lack a lot of the design forethought that went into GBAs and what ultimately made GBAs GBAs. So anyways, guys, that is the HB versus the GBA. As always, God bless and I'm out.